Yep, we got it here. What's up, guys? So this is Yemi from Clean Designs. Um, my office. I changed the setting of my office to um to a tech both size because I don't. If you see my office before, I will be showing you. Look at this is the way my office was before. But now my office is looking like this because it looks like I'm more serious as a graphic designer. It looked like it was looking like a setting of an office. Uh, when you come inside my of my studio, you're going to be seeing my system before me. Why it's supposed to be seeing my back? Oh, that is my back. Before you see my system. <laughs> before you see you see my back as I'm walking. So I decided to change it like that, and it's giving me that vibe of um, a a tech guy. Ah, uh, yeah, that's what it is. So it makes my work. It makes me have that feel of I'm doing something serious. Uh, I just my style. Huh? Okay, so we are going to be working on today this my magic wand. <laughs> uh, we are going to be working on it. I know you you love the design, right? So we are going to be looking at the steps that we take in getting to this. Um, there was a lot of review on our last class. Some people were of the opinion that. How did I get the adjustment layer? How did I do this one? You know? So that last class was basically for people that are into Photoshop, that have gone ahead in Photoshop design for a while. But I already promised that I'm going to be starting from our next class or next two classes. We're going to be starting with um, Photoshop, um, probably design for beginners. We'll start with the differences between Photoshop, Corel Draw. Some people don't like Corel Draw. I don't know why. That guy, I don't know, maybe because I like using it. I use it for a lot of things. We're going to look at the, the difference between Photoshop, Corel Draw, and Illustrator. Those are the three tools, at least. We want to work on design, per se. You should be able to know them. My notes, but when we enter the class, I'll tell you the differences that will tell you about about each of their, um, uh, what about the, um, the, um uh, interface, each of their interface, and we'll talk about it. Then we'll go uh, deeply into the class. Don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel, like, comment, whatever you don't understand. You can ask questions, then I put you through on everything. If it's possible for me to go into any class, then we'll go into class for it. Well, for that, let's go into this class. All right, so we want to work on um, the design. Please don't forget that the um, what we are working on is on Photoshop because we want to edit a lot of things. So, first start with um, our canvas. So my canvas is, I use 1,200 by 420. It's in pixels by 420. 1,200 by 420, which is there already. Um, we're not creating an ad word, so we'll leave it on. Since the social media design, let's, let's work this time around on Let's leave it at 300. Uh, we we'll create it. All right. So the first thing we want to do is to bring in our, our background. So I place in my background. Next thing we have to do is to bring in the um, the the uh, that's the car itself. So we have the car here. I'm bringing it in at its raw state. So I control C because I have it. I've had it designed down already. So I control V it. So we have it at its raw state here. So we have it here already. Okay. So now what we want to do now is to make this car look as if it's on the like on the road. It looks like it's flying. So because most of the time some people don't, one of the ways you can make your manipulation look interesting is to make it look real. 
and sometimes because it's manipulation you want to do some things but you need to make people believe that um, it's 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 a work and you want to show them that this is how I achieved it so we want to make a shadow um, I got this design was uh, from one of my mentor Caesar Caesar graphics so I I had to do one plus one because it taught a, a, a tutorial on that. So I had to alter this one from this class. The one of the tutorial I, he did. So this car was from one of the tutorial. So I want to make a shadow. The first thing we are going to do is we are going to create a layer underneath it. And what we want to do on that layer, we want to make it like a we want to make a shadow underneath there. So what I'm going to do is um, I'll get a shape to rectangle shape to, and I'm going to draw it underneath, underneath it. Or better still, let's use the the marquee, the polygon marquee too. We're going to use it to draw. We're going to use it to draw uh, a rectangular shape. Right. So don't forget, we are supposed to be on that the layer, not on the car. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure um, my foreground is set to black and white. Then I want this black to reflect on this. So what I'm going to do is hit backspace and alt. Then we have the shape of um, the black. So I deselect Ctrl D. Ctrl D. So I want to make it look real now. So what I'm going to do is, on that layer, I go to Filter and go to Blur and Gaussian Blur. Gaussian. <laughs> you still want to say Gaussian, you say Gaussian. Gaussian Blur. Then, I reduce it a little bit. Let's see. All right. OK. Okay, and I click on okay. This is looking more realistic. So I'm going to be dragging it down so it looks more re realistic. All right, we have achieved this already. So the next person I'm going to be bringing is the guy with the bucket hat. The guy with the bucket hat is the one here. I can't seem to remember his name again. So I control C, I control. So he's going to be on top of the car layer. Control V. So now, if you're looking at him, he doesn't. I want to put him here. So I want his leg to be showing because on the layer it's showing. So what I'm going to do is I hit Shift, selecting the layer, and the la the lower layer with the shadow because those are the three the three objects that we have on my layers. So I'm going to picking them together, and I'm taking it up because I want his, this guy's leg to show. All right, so we have that selected. Okay, it should go up a little bit. Yeah, this is quite okay. All right, so I want to bring all my people, all the people I'm going to be working with. Sure, I'm going to be bringing in um, the other guy by the by the left. Sorry, by the right. So I'm going to be control being the guy. Oh, sorry, it's not the one we are picking. So pick him again. Ctrl C, Ctrl V. So it's already well selected and arranged. So this guy is supposed to be at the back of my car because his legs are not fully shown. Then I go and pick on Shion. Sorry, don't be angry because I, it's already this Shion guy, I remember. Ctrl C and Ctrl V. So Shion is selected and I put Shion on this side. I put him here. All right. And uh, Olisa, Ctrl C and Ctrl V. 
So we have them all selected and well arranged. So this will have to be in the front. That means this layer will be on top. All right. So now let's start to let's start our design. Putting life to our design now. So let's blind the Lisa. Let's blind the other guys. So we want to work on this guy as first. So what we want to do is we want to make him look as if he's sitting on um. What I want to make him look as if he's sitting on the bonnet itself. So he, right now he's looking like he's not sitting on the bonnet. He's just like he's fine because there's no shadow. So that's why it's very important to always give shadow to anytime you're doing your manipulation. What shadow does for you is um, it makes your um, manipulation, um, it gives life to your manipulation, it makes it look real. So I want to do that now. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're creating a layer underneath it, its own layer for a shadow. So, so what we're going to do now is, I get the, um, the pen tool, so I'm to zoom in. Okay. Go, 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 go. go. Sorry. So we select that layer. I want to use another method. We select guys layer, then I hold on Alt, I hold on Control, then you see you see this uh, marquee on the hand, like a marquee line on the hand of that is cursor. Then you click on it, so you create a marquee around the guy. Then what we're going to do is, since we have our distance to black, we hold on Alt and Backspace, then deselect. So we have this guy's shadow showing already. So what I'm going to be doing is, I'm going to be um, using filter, blur, like normal Gaussian blur. So you notice that we have, okay, that's too much. This should be okay. Let me see. So we have this down already. So what we are going to do is we want to remove all this one on. What we just want is on the leg and down. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, layer max it, then I pick on my brush tool. I make sure I make sure my um, my brush, my black and white layers as also selected so I pick on black then the lower side make it white so I click on OK so I want to clean it off so we don't really want this You can see it's looking more like he's seated on seated on the uh, bonnet. So we have this guy there already. Uh, all right. So I'm going to group him. It's all, it's all group grouped now. So if I forgot to cover this Felix Chevrolet, it's not supposed to be there because it's for a match banner. So I pick on the rectangle tool and then turn it to black.
we have that done already. I do same for I do same for the um, the one beneath it. So I'm picking on your tea. So I bring it down. So we have that done already. Uh, let's look at it, bringing out the guy. So, looking at this, isn't this good too? All right. Let me reduce the that shadow a little bit. It's looking to the shop. Alright, so the next guy we are bringing in, we lock on that, the next guy we want to work on now is the other guy by the right, so he is there already, uh, I don't think there's anything we need to put on him, because he's looking well fixed there, there's not supposed to be any shadow anywhere, so the next guy is shown, so it's shown that we're supposed to give a shadow because the light is on that side and there's a space there it looks like it's flying so we need to give him a shadow all right create his own layer also let it be underneath him then we do the remember alt backspace all right and we select ctrl d then we pick his own ctrl t So can you see what I'm doing? I'm I did Ctrl T, then I'm on the top of the uh, those nodes. Then I'm bringing it down, bringing it down, bringing it down. So the shadow is down now. So I want to skew it to that side, to the left hand side, so that you're able to see that sh the shadow very well. So I click on skew. I drag left. Can you see? The shadow is now showing over there. So I need to bring this back down. I go to free transform, then I do that. So I stick to it. All right, so we set our transaction. So I go to filter, blow, Gaussian, blow. All right, it's too much. Let's take it down. I click on OK. I reduce the past a little bit. All right. Uh, so I, I want to move him back. I don't want that is left to show. All right. All right. All right. All right. Also, so please, you are following. Learn how to arrange. Also, this is also to help us to learn how to arrange our um, our design. So looking at the uh, focal point down to the background. So after I have done that, I matches to give him his to group him also. So this guy next is um, the keeper holding the ball. So what I want to do is I want to also give him his own shadow. Yeah, you know, click on control. And we click on Alt, I will Control, then you click on the thumbnail of the um, of the um, of the layer you want to create the shadow. So I move into another layer, create a new layer, let it be underneath him. Then I go to Alt and Backspace. Now remember the Alt and back, Backspace is for our shadow, and your shadow comes with what is on top of your this thing of uh, this uh this place it has to be black and white so you pick anyone if your shot if the black is underneath the white uh if your black is the foreground then you click on um control if it's the background they click on ox all right then select ctrl d filter 
law Gaussian law all right then I will use it a little bit let's before we move below, let's control T I'm breaking down also so I'm going to repeat what you did for Chung, the other guy there and we skew this guy skew all right now it looks like a shadow is there so pick on blow and Gaussian blow filter blow Gaussian blow I want to reduce it a little bit all right and I'll reduce the opacity a little okay okay we have this done we are getting there so this is my man here I was supposed to give him a shadow underneath his foot. There was supposed to be a shadow underneath his foot. So what I'm going to do now is... Oh, so I'm going to put a layer underneath. Then I pick... I want to use the magic lasso too. What I want to do is, I want to create that shape around this, this foot. So I have that effect of the foot. So remember, I want to create a, a shadow on this. We can alt backspace. Ctrl D to deselect your marquee. Sorry, I just wanted to delete that guy. So I'm gonna do blow. We are using blow and Gaussian blow. It has a saving us a little while. Okay. Okay. Let's do our nine points. So we use the opacity. I also a little bit. All right, we have this down already. Okay. All right. All players are well fixed now. Now see. So I want to I want to give this my um, background light the background side light a little bit. I'm not feeling that background there. So what I'm going to do is I go to my adjustment layer. I go to my adjustment layer, then what I'm going to be doing is I want the light to, uh, to be brightened a little bit. So I click on bright, then let's not forget, always make sure you power clip um, the adjustment layer, if not, it's going to affect every other thing. So what you have to tell, tell in Photoshop is I want only the background to, to be affected. So you power clip it in, then you can now start doing your adjustments. All right. So now you can see, in comparison to the face of the people, it looks bright. All right. So also, I want to add some other thing. I want to go on the level. I will just increase the level a little bit. Don't forget always to power clip. Go. Sorry. All right. Let's see. Let's see on the exposure. The power clipping, don't forget. I think this is okay. It's okay. So let's make sure you always group your work so that when you're coming back, um, you want to do any adjustment, you can know where your layer is. So we group this one and name it the background. Then, okay, this one is already good. Let's name him Shun. Shun. Okay, this is the car, the car and the and its shadow. So what we're gonna do is click it together. 
and we name this one Kala. Okay. So this two was supposed to be with the car. Alright. That is the shape that we did with the, on the um, bonnet. That is the front of the number plate. This one too, I think I've grouped, grouped him here. So name him um, Bucket Art. Don't worry, whatever you just, you can name anything you want to remember. Once you can remember their name. So I can remember he was wearing the bucket hat. So this one with the shadow, the group also, I'll name him Keeper. All right. And the last guy, uh, this one, you can just give him, I'm just putting him there. And will name him Player, player one. So you can see our layer is well fixed and we arrange. Um, what else again? So this look well placed. You can see that the players were not were not there as at fault. Now it looks like the players are in. They are in the. They are in. The, they are just like taking a picture together. So that is what manipulation does. So you make your work look real. Uh, so thank you very much. Um, please subscribe, like, comment on my channel. Anything you don't understand, you can comment there. Then once I see it and I see the not notification, I'll be able to explain better. So thank you for today's class. Thank you. Thank you. See you next tutorial. God bless.